I said, iron pot, I'll come back to that later. I never did. It's going to do something, and that's why it's really intriguing. But what is that something going to be? Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with my shield, the one that we put this uh, coat of leather on. I promised the next film I was going to shoot it. Well, it's turned out I've lied. So there will be no action in this film, I'm sorry. But there will be quite a lot of talking. But there's a couple of points that I wanted to bring up that your comments have changed how I'm going to approach the test. So I'm altering it. And something else that I forgot to mention that I think actually opens the gateway to something else really interesting. So we're going to do a recap here. We have a poplar shield made in a 15th century way. So it's planked, it's glued together, it's not plywood. Then uh, I came across, one of the comments highlighted, that there's a recipe in the Ashmolean Museum for a doublet of defence. I think it's 14th century. Now, doublet, of course, means coat. But in the recipe itself, it specifically mentions nailing it to your shield. It says nailing it to your shield. Now, maybe that's part of the whole process of manufacturing it. It could be a doublet because, you know, of course, they made sheet steel into, uh, and sheet iron into armour. So you can, if you like, tailor garments which are stiff. So it could be that, or it could be a shield covering. Don't know. But the point is, what you've got are two layers of half-tan leather. Now, half tan leather is leather which has, is rawhide. It's put in the tannin vats and it's taken out part way through the process. So from the outside, what you've got is the soft leather. Then you've got a rawhide core and then you've got leather again. Now, you stick two sheets of that together. And in the case of the recipe, with ground glass and iron filings glued between the two as well. And you have an extraordinary composite armour there that you have multiple layers with different properties attached to, well, either your coat, but in this case, the front of your shield. It's going to do something, and that's why it's really intriguing. But what is that something going to be? And then actually, a lot of the comments mentioned casein glue. And there are Spanish recipes for gluing shields together, specifically with casein glue. Now, this is not casing glue, this is a hide glue, jelly in this case, but a casing glue, you don't really apply hot in this way and it doesn't seem to impregnate. It just doesn't seem like the glue for me. Now, that recipe, great, I get it, brilliant, but I don't think it's applicable in this case. So this is a hide glue. But people said, well, why don't you glue leather on here? So I've actually got two more strips of the leather and I'm gonna glue them on, the half tan leather, I'm gonna glue them on without the iron filings and glass here and then the bottom of the shield, I'm gonna leave bare. So we'll then cover it with canvas, but what it means is wherever the arrow strikes, we can compare, we can see different things. But there's something else very important that I mentioned in the film that is actually tangential to this. So there is a reason for this, so bear with me. When I was talking about the glue in the pot, I said, iron pot, I'll come back to that later. I never did. Hi, I've just interrupted today's film for another Todd Cutler related interesting fact. And today we have a broken back long sax. Now, the thing is, these didn't just end at the end of the Viking Age, at sort of like 1066 or thereabouts. You can still find pictures of knights using these all the way through to the end of the 12th century. So you'll find this and loads of other similar things on togcutler.com. But now, back to the film. Now, the thing is, when you tan leather, what you do is you take lovely dog excrement, pure in medieval terms. There really was a job called pure collector. So you take dog excrement and you take oak bark, and you put it in a tanning pit with water and your skins. And what it does is it's an enzyme reaction that it changes uh, the rawhide into leather, all right? It is actually a process. But what happens then is that part of that is the oak bark. It introduces tannin, tannic acid, into it. Now, that tannic acid, as any oak worker knows, reacts with iron. Because if you have a lovely, nice, brand-new oak table and you leave your chisel on the top, you will get a big, deep, black mark right across it. And that is the iron. Now you can speed that reaction up by adding vinegar to it. So actually what I've done is I've swept the uh, floor of my forge, mixed in some vinegar in this cup here, did it a couple of hours ago. But the thing is, what then happens is you put it on your leather and it comes out. At the moment it's grey. I'll show you that in a couple of minutes if I remember and it will be black. So if you're part of any of the Viking societies in the UK who ban black leather, remember, easiest, cheapest thing. Now the thing is, we now have black leather, but that actual reaction happens between the leather, which is in the glue pot, and the iron pot itself. 
So naturally, the glue becomes black and thick over time. It looks almost like engine oil. It really does, like black treacle. And that now becomes really interesting because this one, it was fresh. That's why it hasn't really uh, discoloured that particularly. But that black glue, because that's the colour it will go if you do it in a black pot with leather, maybe, just maybe, that has something to do with gambeson armour as well. Now, there's an intriguing thing about gambesons. They are multiple, in the case of this, 30 layers of shirt linen, and it's just faced with a hemp canvas. But the intriguing thing about them is there was a 15th century descriptor that said black gambesons. Now, why would they want a black one? Well, it was more defensive. Everybody knew black gambesons were more defensive in the 15th century. Brilliant. 600 years later, we have no idea what they're talking about. That's history for you. But something about black gambesons. So what were they? Were they steeped in something like pitch? Well, possibly, but that would be vile to wear. But they might have done. And the thing is, what happens if you can get the pitch hot enough and it can impregnate all the layers? And I doubt you could, but if you could, it begins to act a bit like fiberglass, that the linen itself is not stiff. You back it up with something, even something brittle like pitch or hide glue, and suddenly, just like fiberglass, you go from flexible fibres and brittle glue, put the two together, you end up with something incredibly tough. Now, there is a uh, line of thorax, which is an old uh, ancient Greek type of armour, which I believe was made of layers of linen and glue. So there is precedent. Maybe that's what they did. I don't know. Now, I've touched on this in lockdown longbow tests three years ago, two years ago, but actually what I didn't do was really soak it and then I didn't press it because I think that actually getting it really tight and really hard is going to be part of that secret. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to soak half of this piece and then we're going to press that half and we're going to do our comparative arrow tests again. Is it going to be the answer to Black Gamsons? I doubt it. But will it give us something to think about? Well... I hope so. So I'm just going to speed up the process of making that obviously black, if you like, by adding a bit of that in there. So that's going to help. Obviously, that's not quite how it was done, I assume, because we don't know anything at all. But like I said, the vinegar is not critical to the process. All the vinegar really does is just speed it up. So we're now going to put in our bits of leather. We're going to attach them onto the shield, just as we did before. And then I'm going to let it dry. And this time, it is a promise. The next time you see the shield, it'll be hanging up, getting ready to be shot. And alongside it, just as a slight side issue, we'll have a look at the Black and Gamson. But don't forget, if you're interested in this, subscribe, sign up to the bell notifications, turn everything, turn everything on. Come down to the websites, check it all out. It all helps. Anyway, I'll see you again. Bye bye. <laughs>